honor to have Lieutenant Colonel Scott Taylor here today as our guest speaker. Scott grew up in Long Valley and is a 1991 graduate of Westmore Central High School. Lieutenant Kelly is a recipient of the Bronze Star and Pearl Heart Medal. Colonel Kelly, come on up and talk with us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and especially thank you to the scouts and the color guard. You guys are amazing. The acapella group, thank you for uh, performing today. Um, thank you, Tom, for the introduction. I'd like to thank Mayor Morello, uh, the Township Committee, the assembled uh, special guests on the podium. But I'd like to take a special moment to thank our, my fellow veterans and their family members for gracing us with their presence today. Thank you not only for your service to our country and blessing you with our presence, but also for your sacrifices that, that you and your family have endured in service to our country. According to some estimates, there are approximately uh, 58 million Americans who have served in the military since the country's founding in 1775. Hmm. According to the Veterans Administration and the Census Bureau, there are approximately 19 million living veterans today. The 19 million may sound like, like a lot of people, but that's actually only 8% of the population aged 18 and older. So a very small portion of people have actually served the country. And that population, that number of living veterans is rapidly declining. Just two years ago, there were more than 20 million veterans in the United States, most of whom have served in World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam. Today, there are only about 2 million World War II and Korean veterans, and the largest cohort of veterans today is the 6 million soldiers, sailors, airmen and Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who served during the Vietnam War. In fact, with the median age of 65, our veterans' population is getting much older and declining rapidly. The number of post-9-11 veterans the, the group I belong to, is somewhere about three, 3 million people. And while that group will grow over the next few decades, it will still become a smaller portion of the proportion of the population as fewer and fewer people choose to serve their country. So really what we're talking about is a very small group of people who have taken the oath to serve their country in the last one, most of them having served in the last 100 years. This, in my opinion, is a sad statistic because the very health of our republic relies on veterans. Veterans enrich our communities in many ways. They are able to deal with stressful situations. They're decisive decision makers. And they provide leadership that has been tested in some of the most difficult circumstances imaginable. What sets our military apart, though, from so many other militaries around the world is that we have been an all-volunteer force since 1973, when the draft was, was eliminated. The young men and women of our armed forces today are some of the very best people that society has to offer. They're more educated than uh, the average society as a whole, in fact. Now, people join the military for a lot of reasons. Some include access to our health care system, which is, which is very good. Uh, we do offer wonderful educational benefits. Or some people join it as an opportunity to see different parts of the country or travel around the world, like I've had the opportunity to do. But regardless of what reason they join the military, every single person, not just those who deploy to a combat zone, raises their right hand and swears to deport, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Therefore, the essence of military service is the service of others before self.